let's first state a theorem that makes it a lot easier to compute the least square solution to a given problem in the special case that we mentioned at the end of the video in the, in the last session. So the theorem says, given a linear transformation from Rn to Rm, that's called A, let me write it here, and a vector B in the codomain of this linear transformation, A, let's say, x in the domain, in the domain that's Rn, is a least squares approximation to Ax equals B. Now this is using the definition that we had made before, which remember was x is a least squares approximation to Ax equals B if and only if Ax equals a projection of B onto W, where W is the column space of A. If and only if x is a solution to the system A transpose Ax equals A transpose B. Now, we mentioned last time that, so let me just say here, W equals the column space of A throughout this entire discussion. Now, we mentioned last time that if we have an orthonormal basis of W, we can actually solve this problem relatively easily, but in general, we're not given an orthonormal basis of W. So this formulation of the problem makes it much simpler to compute. So I said it, but I should also write this, that this means the tr taking the transpose of this matrix. And taking the transpose is easy. You just swap the columns with the rows. So this just gives you a new linear system. And in general, this is much, much easier to solve and something like this. And the reason this simplification occurs is because we've taken our subspace to be the column space of some matrix. So before we give some examples of how to apply this theorem, we'll give the proof. If you want to skip the proof, you can go to the next video. So this is an if and only if proof. So we'll prove it in two directions. Let's, let's first suppose that x is a least squares, suppose x is a least squares solution to ax equals b, i.e. x solves ax equals a projection of b onto w. Now, here's a little picture that'll help us visualize everything. Let's say this is the vector b. This is the subspace W. This is the projection of B onto W. If we take the difference of B with the projection onto W, so B minus the projection of B onto W, then that difference is exactly this line that's orthogonal to W. In other words, this vector is in the orthogonal complement of W. And because it's in the orthogonal complement of W, we know that no matter which vector we take in this subspace, let's call any vector here A, and the reason we're going to call it A is because A is an element in the column space of, um, of the matrix capital A, then the dot product of A with any of these vectors I mean with this specific vector, equals 0 for all A in the column space of A. In particular, if we take the actual columns of A, so A, E, I, let's say, and we dot, this is the ith column of A as a matrix. And we dot it with 
this vector, this is always going to equal 0 for all i from. And in this case, since the domain of a is rn, it's for all i going from 1 to n. We can write this dot product using the transpose. So remember, the dot product is the, the multiple, you multiply each of the entries in the vectors, and then you add them all up. And the way you can express that is using the transpose of a particular vector. If we write this as a column vector, then we can write this as a row vector by taking the transpose and then mul matrix multiplying these um, entries. So we would take A, E, I, transpose times the vector b minus pwb equals 0 for all i. But this transpose, the fact that um, if, we take, if we look at this um, column of a and we take its transpose, and if this is true for all i, then this is saying that this vector is the dot product of this vector with each of the transpose vectors from A dotted with this is 0. Therefore, if we take the matrix A and transpose it, and we multiply it, matrix multiply it with this vector, it will always equal 0. And now rewrite this by moving everything over to one side. We get A transpose times the vector B equals A transpose times this projection. But by assumption, this projection, we know that x solves this equation. So we know that this also equals A transpose AX. And this shows that if x is a least square solution, in other words, if it solves this problem, then A transpose a transpose A acting on X equals A transpose B. So this proves the theorem in one direction. To prove the theorem in the other direction, I'm running out of space here, but I can give you at least the sketch of this proof. Now suppose that um, this equation is satisfied. So suppose X is a solution to A transpose AX equals A transpose B. We can move everything over again as we did, sort of going backwards in this calculation. And we can express this by saying that A transpose acting on AX minus B equals 0. In other words, this vector ax minus b is in the orthogonal complement of the column space of a. So it's in the orthogonal complement of w. Now, if we go back to our picture, we know that the vector b can be uniquely decomposed as the sum of two vectors, one a vector in w and one a vector in the orthogonal complement of w. So this is a theorem. Um, that you might cover uh, in, in the part of your linear algebra course on um, when, you talk, when you discuss orthogonality. So B has a unique decomposition into a vector in W plus a vector, let's say in the orthogonal complement, let's call it V, where W is in W, and V is in the orthogonal complement of W. But this equation here says that if we take the difference, AX minus B, and we get in the orthogonal complement, we know that this has to equal some vector. So AX minus B equals a vector in this orthogonal complement. Let's just call it V for now because it's in the orthogonal complement. Rewriting this equation says that B must equal AX minus V.
And a, where is ax? ax is in the column space of a. In other words, it's already in w. So this is the vector in w. And therefore, this vector right here has to be in the orthogonal complement. And this uniqueness decomposition theorem tells us that this vector is exactly b minus ax. So this, looks, this is going to look a little bit silly, but b equals ax minus ax minus b. And the uniqueness decomposition theorem tells us that this vector that's in the orthogonal complement must equal the projection of b onto that subspace w. In other words, ax, this term right here, has to equal the projection of b onto w minus this vector right here. In other words, ax equals the projection of w onto of b onto w. And that means that x is a least square solution because it solves this equation. So that follows from the uniqueness of orthogonal decomposition of a vector into two parts if you have a given subspace. One into a vector in that subspace, that's where this ax equals um, the projection of b onto w comes from. And the other vector is just the orthogonal complement, um, the projection onto the orthogonal complement which is just the difference of the vector itself minus that vector in the orthogonal subspace. So this is the, the proof of this theorem that allows us to say if we want to solve a least square solution problem, when w equals the column space of a, we merely have to solve this system. So the next few videos will do lots of different examples of how to actually